In this video, we're going to look at the brand new generative upscale inside of Photoshop, which uses generative AI to enlarge images and increase resolution. So believe it or not, there's actually three upscaling tools inside of Photoshop that use AI, two of them being there for a long time. So we're going to compare these three to see how well generative upscale works. In this tutorial, we're going to have a look at generative upscale. So gen upscale actually dated her in high school. She was very fancy. So gen upscale is using AI to upscale an image. And right now it's only in Photoshop beta. So we're going to try it on two images. We're going to use a photograph and then we're going to use a design. And it's going to be kind of interesting how it's different with each. But let's start with this. If we look at this right now, it's a thousand pixels tall. And this is viewed at 100% magnification. All right, so why don't we go ahead and we choose image. And then if we go into image size, this is where we would resize the image. But let's not use these tools here right now. We'll come back to this. For now, let's choose generative upscale. You'll see the button is right there. And we have one option. We can go the size two times, three or four times. Right now, the maximum that it's going to do while it's in beta is 4,000 pixels says that on Adobe's website here, it's 4,000 pixels while in beta. So that might imply that we're going to get more resolution when it's out of beta. We will see. And the other thing that's interesting is it will not deduct generative credits while in beta. That also implies when it goes into Photoshop, it might, but right now it doesn't. So we're going to choose upscale and this is going to use uh, Adobe's AI to create a larger version of it. Now you might be familiar with this with Topaz and some other tools. Don't ask me, how does this compare to them? Try it out for yourself. Um, maybe in the future, I will do a comparison, but for now we're gonna focus just on the tools inside of Photoshop. All right, so if we look at this, this is at 100% right now, and this is a much bigger image. So maybe you're thinking this might be a way to get around the resolution issues with the AI, we can upscale them. Yes, absolutely. All right, but let's have a look and see what we're getting. Notice here it stacks it with what it calls original. So I'm going to assume the original is just taking that one and stretching it. Or maybe it's using some kind of an algorithm like by cubic. But if we zoom out here so we can see it on the screen and I look at before and after, we can definitely see a difference between the original and the upscaled. Notice more detail in the background here. We've got that bouquet from the camera. When we upscale it, it's definitely looking more like just a regular blur. And we're not seeing so much, you know, the, the bouquet. And we're also seeing some differences here. But if we zoom in, double click the magnifying glass, and we go in at 100%, and let's look, there's the original, there's the upscaled. Notice much more detail in the leather. Let's have a look here at our model, which is violinist Taylor Davis. You might want to check her out on YouTube. Um, she's an amazing musician. All right, so let's have a look here. If we go and we see this is just the original, and then this is the upscale. The upscale is definitely showing more detail. One of the downsides I'm finding sometimes is it the detail looks good, but some of the smoother areas, it can kind of smooth them out a little too much start to make them look a little cartoony. In this case, not too bad. All right, but before we move on, let's talk about this original. Is it really the original? So let's go to this image here and I'm just gonna duplicate it quickly. So we're gonna choose image and then we're going to do duplicate and we'll just call it test and it's gonna create a new document. The reason is so we can keep the original. So I'm going to resize it. So I'm going to choose image, image size, and then we're going to up this to 4,000 to get the original. Now, I'm going to guess that maybe when this was up it, it was using preserved details or maybe bicubic sharpener. But what we're going to do is we're going to be doing preserved details too. And this one also uses an AI algorithm to create a better enlargement. So as I was saying, as we go through here, you're going to learn about some of the other tools in Photoshop. So let's go ahead. So we've enlarged this test image. Why don't we drag this into 
the upscale. Hold down the shift key to center it, release, and there it is. So we see this is the four scale. Let's turn it off. And then this is what they say is the original. So we're just looking at the original in the background. And let's look at the one I scaled using preserve details. Hmm. Looks like the preserve details actually is giving more detail. Look at her bracelet here. Look at the detail on the wood on her violin. Okay, so when we see the original, that's not a very good version of the original. So this other one is better. So let's compare that to the upscale. So there's generative upscale. And there is the one that we enlarged. Let me show you another way of upscaling images, and that's using another AI tool in Photoshop. And if we go under filter, and under filter, we're going to go to neural filters. And yes, there's an upscaling neural filter that has been here for a long time. Some of you may know it. This might be new to others. It's called Super Zoom. So if we go into Super Zoom and we turn this on, there's our image. And we're going to hit the plus. Now it's two times, three times, four times. And this is going to match what we did on the other one. All of these were four times. Now we have the ability we can remove JPEG artifacts. We can sharpen a noise reduction, enhance face detail. I'll let you play around with those and see what kind of results you get. I'm just going to use this default because I feel like that's going to give us a fairer comparison. So this is using Super Zoom. So we click OK. This upscales the image. And let's drag it in. Hold down the Shift key, release, and let's call this one Super Zoom. All right, time for comparison. Go one at a time. So here's the original. This is the resize using, by not using the smoothing, this is the resize using preserved details too. Okay, this is definitely better. Okay, so this is the AI Super Zoom that we just did compared. I feel like just the sizing does a better job of maybe some of the leather, but it is smoothing it out. Let's have a look up here at the face. Maybe Super Zoom is smoothing out the face a little bit more, and it's showing some detail. This is 100%. That's Super Zoom. Uh, that's Preserved Details. So that's the Super Zoom. Then we're going to do the upscale. Okay, so the upscale is definitely showing a lot more contrast in these areas. Okay. So my guess is maybe upscale is the best, followed secondary by preserved details, third place, super zoom, and obviously last place, the original, which is just there, I don't know, for reference to show how good the upscale is maybe. Okay, so that's on a photograph. Now, certain photos are going to give themselves better to different algorithms. So one of the things you may be able to do is if you're working on these and you say, you know what, I really like this here, I like the preserved details, but when I'm doing the upscale, well, the preserved details is more natural for the wood on the violin. The upscale, because it's regenerated, I don't necessarily like that. Maybe I like the face. So I'm just going to grab that mask, paint with a black brush and say, you know what? I'm going to get rid of the violin. So I'm using the violin from preserved details now. So now we're using the upscale, AI upscale for the areas we want, and we're mixing it with the other one. So you could go ahead and mix and match the different algorithms. All right, let's look at a design because this is going to take on a completely different result because of one. Yes, it's still a photograph. Well, it's a composite I created, but we've also got type and other things to consider here. So let's go ahead and we're going to create, first of all, the AI. We're going to do the generative AI. And we can do it from the menu. If we choose image, we can go directly to generative upscale. Let's do four times because this is starting 1000 pixels, one well, more or less. We're going to choose upscale and it's going to take to 4000 pixels. All right, so let's have a look at these. So let's go to the original and then we look at preserve detail. Ooh, definitely looks better. I noticed a little bit smaller because these were 4,000 and something. So I only did this one at 4,000. So we're 32 pixels off, which is why it's slightly smaller. But that's not going to affect us when we're looking at this. So let's have a look here. Let's look at the typography. Okay, so this is definitely sharper and clearer. Let's look at her sweater here. 
Yep, definitely sharper. The face. Okay, so we look at the face there. Everything is just sharper on preserved detail everywhere. Yep. So I'm just going to say the original is useless. So don't even worry about it. Okay, let's compare it with Super Zoom. And remember, this is the neural filter. All right. So the typography, definitely sharper, clearer. It's getting rid of some of the JPEG artifacts in there. Look at the 2.2 here. Look at that. Look at that. It's better. Looking at the face. This is 100% view, of course. Let's look at the detail in the sweater. For after. It's actually a little softer in some areas. And let's look at the name. Okay. I'm seeing the super zoom around this area here, around these branches. Look how much cleaner it is. All right, here we go. And let's compare that with the four times upscale. Wow. So the sweater, the texture in her sweater here is definitely better on the upscale than anything else. Look at that. Okay, let's have a look at the face. Definitely losing detail. If you look here, there's a little bit of little acne bumps here on her cheek. Notice that's in all of these versions, even the super zoom. The upscale, AI upscale, smoothens this out and removes those. So it is, it could be a good thing or a bad thing. Um, but let's look, look at around her eyes. Yeah, see, it's actually altering her face a little bit. So I feel like it's taking a little bit more artistic liberty than some of these others. In some cases that would work, other cases it would not. Let's have a look at the typography. Super zoom, definitely a lot sharper than the upscaler. Okay, so my verdict, and I'd love to know your opinions. Let me, you drop them in the comments and let me know which ones you like better. But it seems to me like the upscaler is definitely all around giving us a cleaner image. However, it does give us less of a realistic result. So depending on what you're going to use it for, it could work really well or it could work not so well. Looking at typography, it seems that the super zoom is definitely working the best. So for typography, I'm going to give it to super zoom. Photos, I'm going to give it to the upscaler unless you need accuracy. And on some images, it might look just too soft and too smooth and too artificial. In that case, just mask out those different areas and you can combine these. But I'm interested to see when this comes out of beta, what Adobe is going to do with that and how it's going to improve. So the fact that this is just in beta seems very, very promising. And maybe in the future, I'll compare it with Topaz and some of the other upscalers. So I'm curious, let me know in the comments underneath, what is your favorite of these three upscaling tools inside of Photoshop. And if you want to know more about the new release, check out the video here that shows all the new features inside of the new Photoshop update. And if you're new, welcome to the cafe. Hit the subscribe button, turn on notifications, and you won't miss any of my tutorials. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.